2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6 First Drive Review, an effortlessly good, near slam dunk on Tesla. It has almost become a given that a new Hyundai will be an excellent car. Not just one that is great to drive, but also one that is jam-packed with good design, thoughtful practicality, and true usability. So when I say the 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6 did not surprise me in the slightest, I mean it in the best way possible. It is effortlessly good. There's something to be said for Hyundai making an EV sedan in a world that demands SUVs, though it has already covered those bases quite handily with the Ioniq 5, Genesis with the GV60, and Kia with the EV6. It released the volume sellers first. Now, this is Hyundai angling at market domination. There's only one car that the Ioniq 6 is looking to erase, the Tesla Model 3. The most polarizing thing about the Ioniq 6 is how it looks. It's a continuation of the idealized 80s digital future thesis that Hyundai has worked hard to cultivate in its new cars, and definitely the most interesting execution to my eyes. There's a clear focus on exploring even more design possibilities without the limitations that come with a higher riding SUV shape. It's a stunning looking car in person, and the execution of every shape, detail, and line is top notch. If there's a pixel motif to be had, the Ioniq 6 finds a way to include it. That's not to say the Ioniq 6 is impractically designed, it just takes more liberties than the Ioniq 5. But that exterior allows it to have an impressively low 0.22 CD, which contributes to its eye-popping 361 mile range on the longest range variant. Most trims will land around 300 miles, even with all-wheel drive. There are two available batteries feeding energy to three motor configurations, the standard range 53 kWh battery and the long range 77.4 kWh battery that is shared with most other Hyundai and Kia EVs. The rear wheel drive standard range gets a 149 HP motor, while the RWD long range gets a 225 HP motor. At the top, the all-wheel drive model only comes with the long-range battery and gets two motors making a total of 320 horsepower. Visually, it pulls a similar trick to the Ioniq 5. It's based on the same EGMP platform as that car, meaning it's actually a large sedan. The Ioniq 6 is 8.6 inches longer than the Ioniq 5, but has 2 inches less wheelbase. Meanwhile, it's the same width as the 5, but the Ioniq 6 is 4.1 inches lower overall. Visually, it takes up very little room and always presents as a small car, which is a testament to the mastery of proportions from the Hyundai design team. Inside, it gets even more design Y and cool. Largely owing to its engine and transmission less EV packaging, the interior is palatial. Knee room felt endless, legroom in the front seat allowed for a full leg stretch while still allowing rear passengers to have ample room. The cabin feels more spacious than some full-size trucks I've been in. Vertically, however, things become surprisingly challenging. Even for my 5'9 frame, there wasn't much extra space above my head in the front seat, and I was right at the limit in the rear seat. Hyundai says the inspiration for the rear seat is a couch, so tall people should get ready to slouch a bit and sink in. It's the only real miss in the interior, but it is a fairly serious one. I also had plenty of room to put my many things, with generously sized cup holders in the bridge-style center console and a huge space underneath that could fit a carry-on bag. A dedicated pocket for wireless charging keeps your phone safe, while the door pockets can hold a decent-sized water bottle, though not a wide one. Beyond that, the interior was just cool-looking. Hyundai went as close to maximum as possible, with Easter eggs sprinkled across the cabin and huge focal points in the door panels. Those ridges in the door serve two purposes, to break up a large expanse of flat space and to provide reflective surfaces for the architectural ambient lighting that radiates upward. It's the focal point of the interior and sells the hell out of it, and you can even choose any two colors you like and split them top to bottom. Being cool looking takes the interior far, but the materials don't hold up to scrutiny. Build quality is good, with no squeaks present, and most interior surfaces feel rigid and well screwed together. But the surfaces themselves are mostly hard plastics, especially those eye-catching ridges on the door panels. The elbow rests on the center console and door panel don't have much give, and even in the nearly $60,000 Limited there weren't many soft, leather-wrapped surfaces to speak of. 
It's more fitting of the high $40,000 SEL trim, but still could stand to have a lot more material variety. It is much nicer than a Tesla Model 3 but lags behind the Polestar 2 and BMW i4, and doesn't have extra luxe features like a head-up display. It does, however, benefit a lot from Hyundai's typical laundry list of tech, which includes twin 12.3-inch displays and standard Udash on all trims, with the SE getting Highway Driving Assist I, HDA, and the SEL and Limited getting HDA2, which adds machine learning to its algorithm. It does have Apple CarPlay, but the connection is wired. Setting off into the desert sunrise with an Ionic 6 Limited AWD, it was fairly clear that my 150-mile round trip into the mountains and valleys of Arizona was going to be swathed in isolated comfort. This was an important and appreciated test of the true range of the Ionic 6. And though the EPA estimated range of my tester was 270 miles, the dash showed an optimistic 300 miles. That radical exterior might inform certain conclusions about the Ionic 6, but it took a second to recalibrate my brain to the car. I was expecting something sporty and spicy, something distinctly different from the Ionic 5. But in truth, it was largely like the inspiration for the rear seats, a big ol' road couch. It wasn't blazingly fast like we expect modern EVs to be. Acceleration was downright modest, even with the 320 HP Limited I was assigned to. It was plenty, but not the shocking shove I'd come to expect.